Khabib guy. I knew Khabib was going to win. Khabib is a strict Muslim. I believe in the power of Allah. Train Allah. Train Allah. Train Allah. There's nothing else to, there's nothing else to his life. Do you want to go and spend millions of dollars? No. Do you want to go club? No. Do you want girls? No. Train and Allah. That's it. How the f*** are going to beat that guy? Today we're going to talk about the guy who for a long time rather successfully competed in the professional ring. But at a certain moment, he decided to move on from martial arts and dived into business. Right now, Andrew Tate is a quite famous person. Many think that his statements are harsh and controversial, but there are other people that hear beneficial advice and wise precepts in his words. Not too long ago, it became known that the former kickboxer plans to enter the ring once again and compete against the new star of this generation, Jake Paul. Considering this news, we introduce you to all professional fights of Andrew Tate. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with four words and subscribe to the channel. Here we go. Daniel Hughes Professional career of the former worldwide known kickboxer officially started back in 2007. Unfortunately, that's the reason why not all the fight's tapes can be found on the internet. On September 26th of 2009, Andrew Tate was up against a young fighter from Great Britain, Daniel Hughes. The bout was held in Bristol with a local IFK championship at stake. As soon as the bell rang, Hughes went forward. Andrew took a defensive position, not forgetting to work with the kicks to control the distance. Guys spent some time feeling each other out. A minute later, Tate stepped on the gas in terms of pressure and began to barrage his opponent's head with strikes from different angles. Soon, it led to a knockdown. When the Brit recovered, the fight continued. Andrew took the center of the ring once again and began to attack more aggressively. Very soon, this scenario played all over again. Hughes got pushed at the ropes, not being able to answer with anything, and sat on his butt in the corner of the ring. The fighter refused to continue. Thus, Andrew Tate earned his first round TKO victory. It's a shame that his earlier performances are not present on the internet, because prior to that, he already was on the winning streak and climbing sports career ladder. Jamie Bates On December the 16th of 2010, Andrew Tate shared the ring with the fighter from England, Jamie Bates. The win in this clash would identify the new full contact light heavyweight champion. Unfortunately, the full tape of this fight is not present on the internet. However, there is a piece of the eighth three minute round featuring slightly fatigued fighters. But as we can see, Andrew went forward as soon as the bell rang. He began to work as the first number and threatened his opponent with fast kicks. Bates also tried to keep up and used his legs to the maximum. As soon as he tried to load up, Tate immediately used his hands and cooled his heat with quick combinations. When the eighth round reached its first minute, Andrew Tate threw a surgically precise high kick and ended this fight with an unconditional and vivid victory via deep knockout. Oh! That's it. Left leg to the head and it's game over. Yeah. Jean-Luc Benoit. In March of 2011, Andrew Tate suffered his third professional career loss since its beginning. He fought against France representative Jean-Luc Benoit for the vacant ISKA light heavyweight title. The first round was back and forth and a feeling out process for the most part. Both athletes actively worked with kicks and studied each other. Next three minutes were only remarkable due to the illegal groin strike from the French fighter. Apart from that, nothing else really happened. The third round's pace was higher. Andrew Tate took the role of the second number. He began to put more focus on accurate counterattacks while his vis-a-vis -vis started to apply more pressure and hunt for his head. In the fourth round, the overall picture didn't really change. Andrew still put in work as the second number, 
as Jean-Luc Benoit tried to find keys to his tactic and catch his head with a wild blow. The fifth round for the most part happened to unfold in the same way, but this time Andrew decided to stay in the centre of the ring and respond to pressure with pressure. The fight kept on going in the same rhythm till the very end. In the conclusion of all rounds, the French fighter earned victory via split decision. By the way, the rematch took place three months later and this time it was Andrew Tate who got the job done by an eighth round knockout. The third fight between the two happened in a couple of years, which we will talk about a little bit later. Sami Massa After beating the French in the rematch, Andrew Tate performed at Infusion 3, Battle of Gladiators. On August the 12th of 2011, he shared the ring with German representative Sami Massa. The American felt a lot more confident in this bout. He immediately stepped on the gas and went after his opponent, throwing strikes in every possible direction. At a certain moment, Andrew literally froze and sent his opponent on the canvas with a lightning fast right hand. This round, you know, coming out. Oh! There you go! A beautiful right hand, Vinny. I told you, didn't I? The snake strikes, the cobra lands. And when the Cobra lands, he never lets anybody off. When the fighter from Germany recovered, the fight continued. He didn't make any drastic changes in his game, which led to another hard knockdown after Tate's heavy right. Amazing job when he uses it as well. There's the right hand again. I tell you what, that's a thunderous shot. shot there from the Cobra strikes again. The and he's venom. on wobbly legs, Vinny. He really is. He's not going to survive this round, Kieran, I tell you. This time, the German fighter got back to his senses quicker but that didn't change the tide of the fight. Till the very end of the round, the American attacked at will, did anything he wanted to, and all of his strikes reached the target. The second round happened to be the last one for Sammy Massa that night. After a couple of attempts to get in the short distance and exchange blows, Tate once again slowed a bit down, accurately calculated the distance, picked the timing, and ultimately killed his opponent with his last right straight. Good shot there from Tate. He did save the second round. Superb and right Germany hand. is out. What a crunching shot. He predicted the second round. <laughs> and the snake strikes. Another stoppage win via knockout for Andrew Tate. Ednan Omergik. On August the 17th of the same year, Tate faced the Bosnia and Herzegovina representative who was also a new coming prospect, Adnan Omergik. Fighters shared the ring in the full contact Grand Prix finale with a vacant belt at stake. This time Tate needed less than a round. He occupied the entire space around him from the very first seconds and moved forward. The American took the center of the ring from the get-go and began to feed his opponent with fast kicks to control the distance. Young kickboxer masterfully controlled the tide of the fight and when needed, put in work with his hands. Soon, he pressured Omer Gig against the fence. He landed a couple of precise shots and after another high kick connected, Adnan waved his hand. The referee paused the fight to count the knockdown. However, the fighter doesn't want to continue and as it became known later, he made such a decision due to an eye injury. As for Andrew Tate, he scored another stoppage win via TKO and earned full contact middleweight championship. 17 fights, 17 knockouts, a big smile from the brash and arrogant Snape, but let me tell you, another victim feels the poison of the King Cobra. He strikes and he does it again. Vincent Padigin. On November the 12th of 2011, the American went up against another French representative at its Showtime 85 Max for the middleweight title. Unfortunately, the full tape of this fight couldn't be found on the internet, but what we can see in this fragment is enough to draw some conclusions. Fight went the full given distance and as we see, the Frenchman looked better and stronger in some of the sequences. He did more in pressuring, attacking and pressing Andrew Tate at the ropes. The result of such a performance was an expected win for Vincent Padigin via judge's decision.
Joe McGovern. The next stoppage win in Andrew Tate's career came four months later in Manchester. The British-American kickboxer faced his countryman and Thai box school representative, Joe McGovern, at its showtime in the main event of the evening. The fight had a championship status and was held in the middleweight class. It was their first meeting. The fight started off fast. Joe began to throw sharp low kicks. Andrew Tate tried to respond with head strikes and mixed in attacks to different levels. That was the story of the first 50 seconds. Tate mostly tried to keep his opponent at bay and did it quite confidently. But closer to the end of the first minute, the heavy left hand connected with McGovern's chin and knocked him down. Good shot there. Oh! Beautiful shot there. I told you. Beautiful. I told you this kid is dangerous. Like his style or not, he will knock you out. The referee counted to eight and the fight continued. As soon as the fighters got up, the very next kick to Joe's midsection sent him down again. But it's no messing up. Great kick. kick. See? I told you. I told you this kid's dangerous. After another eight seconds, a less confident McGovern tried to change the tide of the fight. He got up and even ate one hook to the body. However, this strike was enough for him. Another attack from Andrew Tate knocked him down for the last time, which earned him another stoppage win in the professional career and another championship. Sahak Papayan In March of 2012, Andrew Tate faced the American fighter from Armenia, Sahak Papayan. It was their first fight and according to the fans on the internet, the Armenian was one of the toughest opponents in the American's career. Andrew Tate looked a lot better in the first three minutes. He actively worked with kicks and due to his leg reach advantage, he could hit Sahak from any distance. He constantly pressured him, mixing in hands and not forgetting about the knees, which overall made him look more confident. The next round for the most part resembled the previous one. Andrew still actively worked with kicks and tried to catch his opponent with hooks or straights, while the fighter from Armenia was not that active. But he landed more precise strikes. Sometimes he simply went forward in a deep defense and when the American finished his spurt, he landed on him during his own attacks. In the third round, Papayan began to land a lot more. He regularly changed levels and when Andrew Tate tried to get him with an onslaught, the low kick was complemented with a hook or a heavy overhand to the head. Such a tactic worked perfectly, considering that the American fighters spent a lot of energy in the first rounds. The fourth round was completely overtaken by the Armenian fighter. Every second strike landed. Andrew Tate clearly slowed down and stood with low hands more often. Sure, Papayan's strike were not heavy enough to send the American to the canvas. However, the power was enough for Tate to feel them. Andrew looked a lot better in the final round. He implemented his fast kicks once again, but that wasn't enough as Papayan also pushed the pace. He threw entire series and combinations of strikes in every exchange that significantly stunned the American fighter. When the last three minutes came to end, all judges sided with the Armenian. That was the way Andrew Tate suffered another professional career loss. Rich Hawking On December the 2nd of 2012, another vacant championship was up for grabs at Infusion 3 Finals. Andrew Tate made his claims with absolute confidence and faced Scottish fighter Rich Hawking in the main event of the evening. The American started the fight off as usual. In the very beginning, he got caught with a counter straight. He did not slow down. On contrary, he began to pressure Rich more aggressively, not forgetting about the kicks. Soon, Tate pressed the Scottish against the ropes and landed a couple of vicious hooks on his body. In an attempt to respond to that, the Scottish tried to catch the American with the kick, but got hit with an illegal groin strike. After the warning from the referee, the fight was resumed. Things got back to normal and Andrew Tate went forward once again. He began to feed Rich Hawking with leg kicks and when he pushed him to the ropes, he threw a precise right hook and instantly folded the Scottish fighter.
Even though it was hard for Rich, he managed to get up. However, he didn't last for too long. As soon as the fight continued, Andrew Tate rushed at poor Scottish and sent him to the canvas with a drilled combination. As a result, Hawking was not able to continue fighting. Andrew Tate finished the year of 2012 in a beautiful fashion with another stoppage win via knockout in the first round. Wendell Roche In the year of 2013, Andrew Tate earned five confident wins via decisions, one of which was over the French fighter Vincent Patagin, against whom the American lost in November of 2012. 2014 started off a lot better for the future star. In March, he shared the ring with another French representative, Cyril Vetter, and knocked him out in the first round. A month later, Andrew Tate lost to Slovakian Miroslav Singo by decision. And after that, in the summer of 2014, the American complemented his knockout collection with another successful fight. On June the 29th, he was very hungry for a knockout in the fight against Hollander in Wendell Roche. Unfortunately, the full tape of this fight cannot be found on the internet. However, it's known that the British-American kickboxer got the job done in the second round. As we can see, Andrew Tate works the same way he used to two years ago. He actively put in work with the kick, used hands when needed and mixed things up to confuse his opponent. He also applied pressure and confidently moved towards the expected result. Soon, the volume of strikes exceeded the Hollander's limit and was not able to fight back. Andrew Tate scored another dominant win via TKO. Liang Ling After a vivid win over the Hollander, Andrew Tate entered the ring only in January of 2015. At K1, China vs USA, he faced Liang Ling in the Infusions Grand Prix with a championship under 19 kilos at stake. Throughout three rounds, the American demonstrated complete dominance. From the very beginning, he took control over the distance and did what he wanted. He hit his opponent from any angle, attacked with various combinations, not forgetting about the kicks. The American took every round. Andrew Tate scored a decisive unanimous decision win and grabbed another regalia in his professional career. Jean-Luc Benoit 3 In March of the same year, Andrew Tate once again shared the ring with the French representative Jean-Luc Benoit, against whom he lost via decision and then beat him by a knockout in the eighth round. In the third fight, these guys showed their best. For those seven rounds this fight lasted, we saw everything we possibly could. Neither of the fighters didn't spare power, energy or health. But Andrew Tate was not willing to give the win to his opponent and this time he used his entire arsenal. Constant pressure, volume of kicks, high pressure and persistent will to win, all of that helped the American to earn another decisive win and finally put this rivalry to rest. He finished the trilogy with the Frenchman on his terms and once again proved that he is indeed a good fighter, even by modern standards. Miralem Ahmeti we gradually moved to the last professional fight in Andrew Tate's career. On February the 10th of 2020, a 33-year-old American debuted in a rather new well-known organization called KO Masters. At the seventh event, he faced a young 24-year-old fighter from Serbia, Miralem Avmeti. As we can see, the American's tactic is still effective throughout the years. He still actively uses kicks, properly manages the distance and studies his opponents step by step. The first fall of the Serbian fighter happened 16 seconds into the first three minutes. 
He tried to tie Andrew Tate in the clinch, but got caught with a heavy knee to the body and was sent to a knockdown realm. After that, Andrew became even more confident. With his hands low, he began to search for his opponent's weak spots. The very next high kick from Tate sent Ahmeti to the canvas again. Another meeting with the canvas was a lot more impactful for the Serbian fighter, and considering how he handled that high kick, it seemed like he was not interested in continuing to fight. Well, that's the way this fight ended. Andrew Tate scored another stoppage win via TKO in the first round. Lulian Strigariu A bit more than two years ago, in November of 2020, Andrew Tate had one of his last fights in the professional ring. At RFX one night in Bucharest, he went up against the Romania representative Lulian Stugariu. At that moment, the younger generation's motivator was already considered a veteran, as he officially retired and hadn't attended any sports events for a couple of years, focusing more on the basics business and self-promotion. Even after official retirement, the British-American still looked very good in the ring. He had decent movement, was not behind on the attacks and actively threw kicks. In other words, he was in decent shape. He brilliantly managed the distance, caught the Romanian's limbs from any distance and soon dropped him on the ground. Oh, head kick! Oh, head kick! Andrew Tate translated crystal clear confidence in his power. He knew that everything went according to plan and that the win was near. And that's what happened. Despite the fact that the Romanian managed to get up, he didn't react to the referee's gestures or words. Thus, in his retirement, Andrew Tate scored another stoppage win with an incredible ease. Cosmic Lingura a month later, Andrew Tate entered the ring for the very last time. He decided to close a tough year of 2020 with another vivid win and entertain the loyal fans in Romania. He shared the ring with a young 19-year-old fighter, Cosmic Lingura, at an 8th KO Masters event in the main event of the evening. The start of the fight instantly set the high pace. The Romanian representative literally rushed at the American veteran. Andrew tried to work as the second number and shoot back with the favorite kicks. However, constant attempts of his vis-a-vis -vis to cut the distance and land a heavy strike at first gives such an opportunity. A minute later, the 19-year-old guy slowed down a bit and Andrew began to work in his usual manner. Overall, the first three minutes went in that way. At first, aggressive reconnaissance with the kicks from Tate, then aggressive convergence from the Romanian, clinch, and the referee separated the fighters to the sides. The second round did not keep the same pace. These three minutes were completely taken by the veteran. One and a half minutes later, it was Andrew Tate who snatched the initiative in his hands, throwing heavy and precise shots. Lingura ate every single one of them against the ropes and found himself in the standing knockdown. Expectedly, he did not express desire to continue fighting and Andrew Tate earned another TKO win in his professional career. There it is guys, currently it's known that Andrew Tate plans to box with Jake Paul who not long ago had a big win against the MMA legend Anderson Silva. Well, on paper, this matchup would be really interesting. Considering that the famous blogger mostly fought against his equals, the athletes that are not into the discipline of boxing. There were also popular basketball players and MMA fighters. And as we know, Andrew Tate is a rather skilled kickboxer. He works with his hands no less efficiently than with his favorite kicks. Not too long ago, they had their first stare down. And that means that perhaps we're going to know more details about this fight's organization. As we witnessed ourselves, the genius, playboy and philanthropist in his best years delivered rather good performances and it would be interesting to see him in the ring with the top representative of some of these sports disciplines. For example, Alex Pereira. And that's it for now guys, leave your opinion in the comments on what you think about Andrew Tate in terms of sports below. 
And do you think that he has chances in the potential fight with Jake Paul? See you soon. How you view the world absolutely and utterly shapes how you react to the world, how you act in the world, how people view you. It's all down to how you view things. You have to believe you're a fucking man, and you have to believe you can achieve anything. I'm not saying you can achieve anything easily. I'm not saying it's not going to take a whole bunch of work. I'm not saying it's going to happen quickly. You have to believe you can achieve anything.